So we're here and we're uh, we're getting a random loose sample here right now, and uh, the contractor has his cone and his Gilson splitter all set up. So what we're simply going to do is we've chosen a random truck based on an Excel spreadsheet that we have in our computers. It has given us a predetermined tonnage to do this test on. We've reached that tonnage, so uh, we've uh, let the contractor know it's time for a test. So the boom of the material transfer of the vehicle is just going to uh, deposit a small amount of the material in the cone and uh, that'll drop down into the Gilson splitter and uh, then what we'll do is we'll actually drive down the road here and find a nice level flat spot and we'll pull over and we'll perform the test we'll get it tested up. Or we won't actually test it, we'll get it in the boxes and uh, get it ready to take to the lab. So the material's going in right now. The operator's letting them know, tell them to bring more. More. A little more. And he says, good. Oh, just a bit more. Good, he says. So we should have the Gilson, should be full now of material. And the technician that works as the tester for our contractor, he's going to uh, he's going to move down the road, and we're going to follow him. So we've taken the test as you saw in the previous segment. Now we're up on the side of the road here and we're going to run the material through the Gilson splitter for the first time. So what we use is we've, we've, uh, we've got three, four pails here underneath each, each segment of the Gilson splitter. So we're going we're gonna to trip the lever here and we're going to put this material into the buckets. So that's going to divide our sample into four equal samples. In the end, the contractor will take the opposite corners and the owner will take the other two opposite corners. Second truck just pulled up, that's the runner, and he's here to take the sample to the uh, contractor's lab, which is on site at the asphalt plant. The uh, Department of Transportation lab is in a maintenance facility about an hour's drive from here. On the back of my truck, you'll see I've got uh, I've got four sample boxes all all set, and uh, once we get our two splits, we're going to uh, get those boxes filled up. So we've done our first split. <laughs> we've done our <laughs> we did our first split on the trailer. We've got a pretty even split in the buckets, not too bad. So we're just, uh, we pulled the Gilson off the trailer. We're leveling it up to make sure it's pretty level because we don't want the material to, uh, when it comes out, to, uh, to get too much material in one corner. Then the other, we like it to, to run through uh, evenly. It's a little bit of an art here, not getting too much material or, or, or not having too little material. We might have a little bit too much here this time. It's a difficult thing to do when you're just getting samples off a material transfer vehicle. So as the on-site technician, I have to witness this operation. Uh, I'm not hands-on. The contractors, uh, QC people, look after this. So we have a very healthy sample this time. We've got more material than we can get into the Gilson splitter, so we've got uh, a little bit of a technique here that we use.
and the owner of the Department of Transportation will take buckets from the other officer. So, so right now, what uh, we, clean, we cleaned out that Gilson before we went to work on this sample. So what the technician's doing right now is he's cleaning the fines that are stuck to it. We coated in Pam uh, cooking spray, and uh, he's just taking the putty knife there and he's making sure that the fines make it into the sample. Otherwise, the mix it won't be representative of the uh, all the fines. Yeah, it won't be representative if all the fines are uh, sticking inside the Gilson. So, so we just take a few minutes to scrape those out, get them in the sample bucket, so when they they go to the labs to be sampled, that uh, that they'll be representative of what we've taken. These two buckets, they came from opposite corners. They're going to be my buckets. Mine are going to, uh, we're going to put some boxes. We're going to split it again, split them into four boxes. While the contractor's tech here, uh, they're using paper bags. And he's going to pour those uh, those two buckets into his paper bags. So there's my boxes. They're all uh, pre-recorded with, uh, with the, uh, the little bit of information. There's the contract number, the material, the contractor, the date, the lot number, and the tonnage. Once we get done, I'm going to uh, take a temperature and we'll put the temperature on the boxes. We use sheathing tape on the boxes. We found that duct tape and, and uh, packing tape all uh, reacts to the heat. But the sheathing tape uh, is probably the best idea for taping these boxes up. It uh, doesn't seem to react to the heat and the adhesive is very good. Contractor will uh, will keep my samples until the end of the lot, so there'll be three tests in this lot. And uh, at the end of the lot, the contractor will take uh, all three sets of samples uh, into our lab. We do delayed testing on our end, and uh, at the end, we'll get together with the contractor and we'll compare our results. So there's the split. He'll just take a few seconds, he'll scrape the fines from the Gilson into my boxes to make sure that my sample's representative as, as his is. And we'll get them up on the tailgate of the truck and I'll seal them up and put some security tape on them and we'll be done. Okay, so these are our, this is our uh, security system that we have for our boxes. So uh, what we have here is I'll show you, this is a new box, it's never been opened before, so these are our security seals. So what they are is uh, we have these made uh, for our boxes, and uh, what they are is they're uh, they're what they from a company called Label Lock, and they're a security seal we put on the boxes. So what they do is they prevent the boxes from being opened before they arrive at our lab, because the contractors, as part of the contract, they look after the samples and they deliver them to the lab. So here's uh, one of our safety seals here. So uh, what we do with these is we just simply peel these off. They're self-adhesive. We stick them on the box that already has the sheathing tape on it. And we put them on and they're sealed. Uh, the, the adhesive is pretty good. So what happens if the, someone tries to open the box and tamper with it? So if, we, uh, if I work away at the corner here and I get it to come up, there's a film on the back of that tape which leaves an imprint on the box that says opened. So once it gets to our lab uh, and we see this, so there's even if they want to, there's no adhesive left on this tape and if they try to put it back on, they'll never get it lined up properly. And you'll always, you can still, as you can see, it still says opened on it. So even though the tape is back on again. So our lab people will know that the sample's been tampered with. I don't think in my recollection that we've ever had an issue with it, but it's just a safety precaution that we use when we're uh, when we're doing our boxes. So, so that's our that's our security seals that we have. These boxes, I have them ready for a test, and you can see on the bottom, I've got my seals are added already. 
once we fill the boxes and we close them up and we put the red sheathing tape on them, I'll seal the other end and they'll be good to go. So that's how we do it.